Today I've got this nice limit of a family of improper integrals to work through. I think this is a nice example that reviews a lot of concepts from an integral calculus class. Okay, so let's see what we have. We want to calculate the limit as n approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 2n minus 1 over x squared plus 1 to the n plus 2. Okay. So let's see maybe how we would want to get started. Well, we have an odd number of x's in the numerator, and then we've got this quadratic thing squared in the denominator. That tells us that we could probably split one of these away and then form some sort of integration by parts because we'll be left with something that we can integrate. So let's maybe do the splitting apart first, and then we'll see the integration by parts a little bit more clearly. So I'll just bring this over. We have the limit as n approaches infinity, our integral from 0 up to infinity. Now I'll write this as x to the 2n minus 2 times x over x squared plus 1 to the n plus 2 dx. Okay, so I've really just factored this numerator into two parts. That's not too bad. But now let's notice that essentially the derivative of the inside of this thing in the denominator is the numerator up to a constant, which means we could do a simple substitution to integrate this portion, which hints towards integration by parts because we can integrate one part out of this. Okay, so let's set that up over here. So I'll set u equal to my x to the 2n minus 2 and then my dv will be the rest of it. So that'll be x over x squared plus 1 to the n plus 2 dx. And then from here, we can calculate du. So that's going to be 2n minus 2 times x to the 2n minus 3 dx. That's just from taking the derivative here. We can also calculate v, and that's from taking the antiderivative. So that will leave us with something that looks a little bit like this. We have minus 1 over 2 times n plus 1 times 1 over x squared plus 1 to the n plus 1. Great. So let's talk our way through that. Notice if we were to take the derivative of this, we would probably want to envision this term as x squared plus 1 to the power minus the quantity n plus 1. Then taking the derivative with the chain rule and the power rule will deposit us a 2x in the numerator and then an x squared plus 1 to the n plus 2 in the denominator. And then to take care of all of the rest of the constants that are involved here, we need to multiply by this. Okay, so now from here, we can apply the standard integration by parts formula, which is the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du to make some simplification over here. Okay, so that means we have our limit as n goes to infinity, and then we'll split this with our integration by parts setup. So we have u times v, so that will be minus x over 2 times n plus 1 times x squared plus 1 to the n plus 1. So something like that. And then we're going to evaluate this from 0 to infinity. But let's notice evaluating this at 0 will always give us a 0 because we have an x in the numerator then evaluating an infinity is the same thing as letting x tend towards infinity, but that's also going to give us a zero. So that tells us that both portions here, both endpoints, tend towards zero. Okay, and now we have the minus v du component, but now let's notice that that is going to cancel this minus sign, and we'll be left with plus... Now we have n minus 1 over n plus 1. So that comes from canceling the 2 here with this 2 here, and then the minus signs cancel like we said. And then we have the integral from 0 up to infinity of x to the 2n minus 3 over x squared plus 1 to the n plus 1 dx. Great. But now let's notice that we've just built the original 
integral, and by the original integral, I mean this one right here, with the replacement of n with n minus one. Okay, but that means we can continually take objects like this out of the integral and descend this value of n further and further and further down. So let's see what the next step will look like. We've got the limit as n goes to infinity of n minus 1 over n plus 1 times n minus 2 over n times the integral from 0 to infinity of the original integral where we replace n with n minus 2 instead. So that'll be x to the 2n minus 5 over x squared plus 1 to the n dx. Great. And now we're just going to take this all the way down until we've got a single value of x in the numerator. In other words, x to the first power. But let's see what multiplier that will leave us with. Okay, so we'll have n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 2 times 1. And then that's going to be over n plus 1 times n all the way down to 3. So let's notice we have a product of n minus 1 terms in the numerator and the denominator. They just have a different starting point. And then that's going to end with the integral from 0 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1 quantity cubed because it's the n equals 1 case. Okay, so now let's bring this up and then we'll finish it off. So in the last board, we ended up with the following expression. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of this descending product in the numerator and another one in the denominator, and then the integral from 0 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1 cubed. Now we're ready to do a little bit of simplification. So let's notice a bunch of terms in the numerator and the denominator cancel. So this 3 will cancel with this 3, and then this n minus 1 will cancel with this n minus 1. And furthermore, everything in the middle will cancel with everything in the middle right here. So that leaves us with 2 over n times n plus 1. And now we just have to deal with this leftover integral. And we're going to do that with an estimation. And that's because it provides a little extra practice that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. So I'm going to first split this up as the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 over n squared plus n times the integral from 0 to 1 of x over x squared plus 1 cubed dx and then plus the integral from 1 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1 cubed dx. And now I'll introduce some inequalities. So this is going to be less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 over n squared plus n. And then here we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x dx. And that's because this x squared plus 1 cubed is always bigger than 1 or bigger than or equal to 1 on this interval. So if we divide by it, we're making something smaller, which means if we get rid of the division by it, we end up with something larger. Okay, and then here I'm going to make a similar replacement. I've got the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the fifth dx. And the replacement that I make here is that x squared plus 1 is bigger than x squared, thus its reciprocal is smaller. But now I can approach each of these just using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So here I'll get 1 half for this integral. So that's a pretty easy calculation. And then here we'll get minus 1 over 4 x to the 4th evaluated from 1 up to infinity, which will leave us with the number 1 4th. But now a half plus a fourth is three quarters. That's going to cancel a little bit with this two, leaving us with the limit as n goes to infinity of three over two times n squared plus n. But now this is fairly simple. We have a rational function. The degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. That means we know that this limit must be equal to zero. And that's a good place to stop.